Hello, hi there, welcome to the second in our 2021 uh, series revising the key concept of unemployment. In this video, we're going to be working through maybe five or six really key unemployment concepts, I think which help us to, to dig beneath the official published data and get a better feel for what is going on in the, in the UK labour market. Here's my first question, what is meant by full employment? Just a couple of years ago, uh, we were thinking the UK economy was getting tantalisingly close to full employment. And then, of course, the, the coronavirus pandemic and the subsequent economic recession uh, put paid to that. So we're moving away now from the idea we can reach full employment in the near term. But what does the term mean? Well, it means where there's enough vacancies for all the unemployed to take work. At the moment in the UK, there's about maybe just a shade under six hundred thousand job vacancies and according to the official data about 1.7 1.8 million unemployed so again we're a long way away from full employment uh, there will always be some unemployment in the economy people are joining the labor market people are in between jobs companies are making people redundant other new companies are starting up so there'll always be some unemployment full employment is not zero uh, but as I say, we, we came pretty close to getting towards a kind of three, well, four percent unemployment uh, and, and then perhaps a little bit lower. So uh, perhaps in the years to come, if we can get through the pandemic, if we can achieve some fast growth in 2021, 22, then perhaps unemployment can head back down to levels where the number of vacancies is pretty close to the number of people who've been out of work for, let's say, six months. A uh, contrast to this, what do we mean by mass unemployment. Well, mass unemployment exists officially when one person in 10, 10% of the labour force is counted, is measured as being out of work. Now, of course, in practice, unemployment, as we know, may well be significantly higher than this, but mass unemployment is basically one in 10 being out of work. And here are the data for uh, selected nations in December 2020. Again, we, we talked about this in the first video. Look at those figures for South Africa and Nigeria. Over a quarter, nearly a third in South Africa, of people are out of work. The true figure is likely to be much, much higher. And in several European countries, unemployment is either above 10%, such as Greece and Spain, or just a fraction below it in France and Italy. Of course, we tend to associate, we typically associate mass unemployment with the Great Depression, that afflicted the United States in the early 1930s. The, the Depression itself lasted over 40 months. Uh, output in the economy, the fallen real GDP from peak to trough, was over 25%. Industrial production fell by nearly a half. There was a dramatic fall in share prices. And unemployment, as a share of the workforce, went up to nearly 25%, as this chart shows. And it stayed pretty high, indeed. It was still above 10% in 1940, before the unemployment rate came down as the American economy moved onto a war footing. Economic inactivity, I think, is again one of those really key unemployment concepts. So economic inactivity measures people who are without a job, uh, out of work, but they're not classed as unemployed because they've not been actively seeking work uh, in, a, in a given time period. So people of working age but neither in work nor actively seeking work. And this is a key, really key issue at the moment. I, I would have a feeling that in 2021, 2022, as we go forward, this will become an increasingly important issue, even more than it already is. There are some fears that the pandemic will increase economic inactivity as the level of long-term unemployment goes higher. Now, there are often complex reasons for economic inactivity. Students may decide to delay their entry to the labour force and remain in full-time education or full-time training. Some people can't search for work uh, because they have family commitments, raising a family or perhaps looking after uh, a chronically ill relative. Some people have long-term chronic sickness which prevents them from actively working. Some people have retired early. Uh, and also there's a group of people who are discouraged workers. People perhaps who've been out of work for a lengthy period of time uh, who've been knocked back in many job applications and uh, who've become, you know, the psychological pressures and mental health issues uh, become important there and they may well have given up on an active search for work. They want to work, but they're no longer actively looking for work. Here's the chart showing the level of economic 
inactivity in the UK uh, for workers aged between 16 and 65. You can see there was a significant rise in inactivity from the early 1990s onwards. It peaked just at the end of the last recession in 2011 at a shade under nine and a half million people. Now that figure has come down. There is uh, uh, one million less people counted as economically inactive in the UK than there was a decade ago, which is good news. Uh, but of course, we fear that figure is going to go up in 2021 and beyond. Now, linked with this is another key concept, and that is long term unemployment. Long term unemployment accounts for people who've been out of work for at least one year. And it's, we regard it as a significant structural supply side problem in the labour market. You see, the longer you're out of work, the harder it is for people to make their way back into paid work. Oftentimes, there are gaps in CVs. Uh, the skills you have might start to deteriorate. Employers may perceive you as being perhaps less employable and less productive. So long term employment, again, is a major concept to be, to be aware of. This chart is annual data from 2000 through to 2019 and tries to track the duration of unemployment in the UK. The grey area at the top of this histogram shows people have been out of work for at least a year. And again, that picked up quite sharply in the last recession, has been coming down, uh, and we hope that can be controlled uh, in the aftermath of the pandemic. But it is a fear for the next couple of years. Now, here's another really important concept. We're working our way in this video through five or six, I think, quite significant concepts. And if you use these in exam questions and assignments, I think it really gives an extra depth to your answer. And the next question is, what do we mean by underemployment? Well, underemployment is defined as a situation where people are working fewer hours than they would wish. So, for example, you might like to work 35, 40 hours a week, but the firm that employs you only gives you 15, 20, 25 hours. Um, so, in other words, there's a, a sense that you're willing to supply more hours of work, but it's not being met by the, by the offer from, from employers. Underemployment may also refer to the fact that, that workers accept a job that don't fully utilise their skills. For example, a graduate with a degree working as a food delivery uh, person, then they might be considered to be underemployed. A related concept is hidden unemployment, also known as disguised unemployment. And this is the number of people who have don't have work, but who are not counted in government reports. For example, people have stopped looking actively for a job and are people who work less than they want to. So we're trying to capture here underemployment and economic inactivity. The truth, the stark reality is that many long term unemployed give up the active search for work and they desperately want to work. But oftentimes their morale and their psychology suffers greatly. A large cohort of people are sidelined onto disability benefits with one or more chronic illnesses. And those and that inequality has become transparent during the pandemic. Many people would like to work, but they, they can't find work or find a suitable job and, and hours because they must care for elderly relatives. And there's also been a rise in self-employment. People working on zero hours contracts, people working on very temporary contracts for agency work. Again, you can make a case for saying that there's a degree of hidden unemployment there. So in all of these cases, we're thinking a little bit about key measures of unemployment. You know, the media capture the week, the monthly data. They tell you what the unemployment rate is as a percentage. But I think the really savvy student economist wants to go underneath the surface to explore a bit more of the detail to look at the composition of the data, uh, dis to disaggregate the data to get a more realistic picture of the scale of the unemployment problem. In our next video, we're going to focus on the pandemic and think about what has happened to unemployment in the last year or two and uh, the policies that have been introduced to try to prevent mass unemployment.